All right, guys. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. We haven't done a lot of these live streams in the past. We've done a couple of them last year. And uh, we're I'm kind of optimistic that we're going to be able to do a few more um, in uh, just in, in shortly because we had, there's a new studio that I'm in right now. And this is not the new studio. This is like a little temporary studio that we've been doing that filming most of our videos in lately. And, but I'm pretty optimistic in about a month, we're going to be in another studio that's going to be really well set up to do uh, more live streams like this. So uh, but for whatever reason, I just haven't done a lot of these in the past. Um, I am eager for your feedback. If you're interested in having me do more of these live streams, a uh, little bit, probably a little more technically proficient than what you're going to see here today. We can definitely do some more of them. If you saw some of the ones that we did last year, we had like three different camera angles. It was in the studio. It was, it was pretty nice. At least I liked it. So uh, this is a little different. So I'm just doing a single, uh, single camera uh, live stream at this point in time. So if you want me to respond to any of your questions, feel free to just um, type them in. If you look on the screen, type them in the comments down below and I'll be able to see them. They're kind of, from my perspective, they're over here and I can kind of read some of these comments and I see a bunch of them kind of popping up here right now. Um, so, oh, this is kind of funny. So anyway, I will try to respond to as many of your questions as possible uh, from just for those of you who have uh, known me for a while, you know I do a lot of stuff in the field where I'm actually traveling around the state. I do a lot of uh, activism training in person, and uh, I do I speak at a lot of uh, different uh, activism events or Republican events around the state. This year, I've been doing a lot of MC work, and I guess I'm an impromptu auctioneer at times, depending on the situation. So uh, I always enjoy meeting people face to face. Uh, these live streams are a little different, and it's a little different to have the same. You don't really have quite that same uh, personal touch or feedback, but uh, I'll do the best I can. And uh, let me know if, uh, like I said, if you guys just give me some feedback, if you like what, uh, if you like this format or not, or if you would have suggestions, that'd be great. So uh, one of these comments that somebody just put up here by Tony, do you think Bob Ferguson will run? And if he wins, does this state get worse? Great question. Um, so this is this comment is coming because uh, for those of you, in fact, the, the video I just filmed today that's going to be up on the YouTube channel here in a little while kind of addresses this subject. But Governor Inslee uh, has decided that his time at destroying the state is coming to an end. He's done as much damage as he can do. And so he's not going to run for a uh, fourth term for governor, which, of course, creates the power vacuum that we've been expecting at some point in time. And not surprisingly, within a day or so, uh, Attorney General Bob Ferguson has officially announced that he's running for office and he's actually filed with the PDC already, Public Disclosure Commission. Um, we believe that Hillary Franz is going to be running too. She hasn't filed with the PDC yet, but I expect her to shortly. Uh, there's rumors that Mark Mullet, who's the Democrat uh, state senator out of the Issaquah, is going to run. And I guess to directly answer the question here um, is that uh, Ferguson would be terrible as governor. Uh, he would be. I mean, there's the thing is, when you really look at Ferguson, um, he tries to hype up as though he's got some great accomplishments under his belt. But for the most part, um, he really doesn't. Uh, he's spent his time uh, abusing the attorney general's office in uh, probably the most cowardly way anybody's ever uh, taken over that position. He spends most of his time attacking people who can't defend themselves very well. So concerned conservative activists, businesses. Um, he, he files a lot of frivolous lawsuits at the federal level while Trump was there. But even if the policies haven't changed under either the Obama administration or under uh, the Biden administration, he won't sue them. Right. So it's just uh, kind of funny. We we have the biggest um, drug uh, violence, uh, crime escalation with the uh, Mexican drug cartels becoming very active in Washington state. And Ferguson does absolutely nothing to try to restrain or contrain, uh, stop that. And uh, when we had riots, he refused to touch any of that. Anything that's hard, Ferguson avoids. Anything that gives him political um, brownie points with his uh, kind of leftist base, that's what he's going to do. Uh, Marlene Flowers, I mean, that case was absurd. That was Bob Ferguson's pride and joy was to go and attack a flower shop, you know, so that's the kind of stuff he's, he likes to do. Uh, I see a comment from John Connolly about Mark Sands zero chance. It's probably true, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's possible that he may run. Uh, he'd probably hurt Franz more than Ferguson if he runs in that race. Um, let's see. Uh, it's going to be Ferguson against whomever the GOP squirts out. Well, okay. So the, John, you mentioned this, and this is one of the other points. 
So Washington State is a top two primary system. So essentially what this means is that uh, the top two vote getters in the jungle primary are the only two that come through. So it doesn't really matter if there's a million people that jump in the race, if there's uh, only one Republican and lots of Democrats or vice versa. Only two of them are going to be on the final general ballot in November. So next August in the 2024 governor race, um, there will be a big scrum in the primary and then it weeds out anybody who's uh, not able to get in that top two uh, position. Now, if the Republicans are, um, like I said, discover a uh, reservoir of unusual competency, then the Republicans may only have a couple of candidates. And if there was just one candidate, for example, on the ballot and the Democrats had three or four of them, then that Republican candidate almost like guarantees gets through uh, to the general. Um, and this is how they kind of game these elections uh, when you're trying to decide how you're going to run. But the Republicans lately have been flooding the zone with a bunch of people who are about equivalent in uh, appeal. And so they tend to dilute the Republican uh, vote over a fairly large area. And that ends up meaning that no Republicans get to the final two. That's what happened in the lieutenant governor race, the 10th led and the 10th congressional race in 20, um, in 2020. And that's also what happened in the 47th led district race, as well as the, um, the, the secretary of state race in 2022. So this is definitely a problem. And it's something that I think the Republicans are trying to resolve by having this idea of for these bigger races, where they're planning to have some kind of a grassroots endorsement kind of uh, process in April, which is the month before filing week next year. And the theory is that the Republican grassroots, they get all the grassroots groups together, they hear from all the candidates who are running as Republicans, and then they endorse their primary candidate. Doesn't keep the other people off the ballot, but in theory, it gives a bigger boost to the candidate that gets the votes at this grassroots kind of Republican sponsored event. And I think that's their theory. I don't know for an absolute fact it's going to happen next year, but I did hear Caleb on the radio talking about it recently, and I think that is kind of their plan. Uh, no, I'm not going to endorse uh, Franz. I see somebody asking me to do that. Um, but I understand why you don't want Ferguson. And yes, uh, it's funny. There's a hierarchy of damage, right, that can be done. And everybody, uh, and, and Ferguson's probably the worst. Uh, it's hard for me to imagine somebody worse uh, becoming governor. Um, I guess Kashama Swant out of Seattle might be worse, but uh, there, there's a hierarchy of, of damage, of course, that somebody can do. And, and Ferguson seems to want to be the one to do the worst job so far. Um, let's see. I got a comment here. Glad Inslee doesn't want to run again. If he left now, um, it would not be soon enough. He can run to China and take the attorney general with him. <laughs> the rest of the, of the crew, of course, he's not going to do that. Semi Bird. Semi Bird is actually uh, one of the Republicans who's running right now. Semi Bird is out of Tri Cities, uh, currently a school board member out of there, military veteran. And um, he's, uh, I mean, he's the only Republican that's actually uh, filed it with the Public Disclosure Commission so far. But I anticipate that there's probably going to be some more that jump in. So uh, we don't know. Um, we don't know who all the candidates are yet. So um, we'll have to see. Um, somebody here saying, I simply cannot imagine being a Democrat in the state after watching what they've done to us. Well, I can't either. But if you talk to enough Democrats, as I have, um, I think you're going to find not too many of them are happy with what's exactly been going on. So um, the uh, I don't think they've been as happy with uh, drug camps and the explosion of crime and the complete and total collapse of any kind of semblance of public education. So I think there's some issues going on there. I've got a comment here from Jason. Can you comment on this gun ban bill that they banned all semi-automatic rifles? I don't hear a lot of people saying that. Um, where do you think the legal challenge will go? Sure, I'll comment on it. I mean, it, it was an idiotic bill. Um, it was fairly predictable. And I'll, you got to understand the politics behind this. So they've the, the Democrats, including uh, Inslee and Ferguson, have kind of rattled around for years saying that they're going to propose some kind of bill like this. And the bill's completely unconstitutional, uh, not just against the federal law, but against our state constitution as well. Um, and so generally... Um, the uh, the day it was signed, there was already a lawsuit filed against it. And I believe there's as many as four. I'm not sure if they've all been filed yet, but there should be about four lawsuits against that. Now, 
all the serious lawsuits are in federal court. Nobody's stupid enough to actually entrust their constitutional freedoms to the state uh, judges that we have, uh, most of whom have been appointed by either um, Governor Inslee or by Governor Gregoire. And if either of those two um, governors have appointed that judge, uh, the likelihood of them caring at all about your freedoms or the law or even the English language is pretty low. So um, so generally, um, they're, those court cases are all being challenged federally. And, and it's worth pointing out that as a general rule, the courts over the last, just the last couple of years have been throwing these equivalent laws out of the way for a while. However, this cause is not a pop, uh, taking away your guns is popular among a very limited subset of the left right now. It's mostly driven by, in our state, it's Nick Hanauer, he's a billionaire out of uh, Seattle. Um, a couple other billionaires have kind of jumped in with him here and there, Bloomberg, um, there's other really wealthy people that have their armed security guards themselves and big fancy m mansions. They just don't want you to have guns and they have a lot of money. And so they've been pushing these ideas for a while. Ferguson is really tied in with Nick Hanauer and some of these other causes. And so I think he, since he knew he was going to probably run for governor, um, Ferguson needed to push this thing through to show that he could do something and that he could justify Nick Hanauer and the other billionaires trying to get all their friends together to give him money because he's going to need money running for office. So that's really the big push between the, the behind the gun bill. I, I kind of think most of those, the ones, the high cap magazine, um, 1639, I know the 21, this is a, that initiative from a little while ago that said uh, uh, 20, 18 to 21 year olds can't own semi-automatic firearms. A lot of these things are getting thrown out in the court system at the federal level. And I anticipate that's what's probably going to happen. Um, let's see. Have you given any thought? To, so John, again, asking, have you given any thought to running for any level of public office? You're very well spoken. I think you'd handle yourself well in debates. Uh, I've actually run for public office before, both successfully and unsuccessfully. I was actually, uh, I ran of all things, uh, and you can see this in my bio on my website, but the, the first office I ran for was most exciting office in uh, in all of any county in Washington state. It was the audit of the assessor's office of all things. Uh, it was uh, your property tax. And it really had more to do with the fact that the property, my dad, who lives next door to me, his property tax had been incorrectly assessed for about nine years. And every year he'd appeal it and he'd prevail. And I ran on the platform that once a decade, uh, the assessor's office should be able to get it right. And, uh, and so that was my first foray into electoral politics. Uh, I'm kind of thankful I was not elected uh, to that position, but I did run a pretty serious campaign and it was a good experience. From there, the next year I ran and I was elected to the Rochester School Board and I was also reelected in 2015. A little story about that that I think is relevant. When I ran for the school board in 2011, the Democrats had this big meeting in Thurston County and they said, whatever we can do, we, we must not allow Glenn Morgan ever to hold elected office. And it was funny because at the time I thought, well, why do you care? It's a little school board. It's a rural school district where I live in South Thurston County. It means something to me because my kids are there. And But why do they really care if I'm holding that office? And um, the reason that they actually said that, and it's pretty smart, is that they don't want people that they're afraid to have in public office. They don't want them holding any public office because they know that becomes a stepping stone, right? A ladder up the, up the pathway. Uh, I'm not in elected office right now. Uh, I don't have any plans right now to run for elected office. Um, I don't have any plans to work in the government at all. Uh, I'm kind of a critic from the outside. I'll make an exception to this. If a Republican gets elected to uh, governor, I want to be the guy that comes in as the hatchet man because I will fire as many possible people as I can at a, at a government. I've always wanted to downsize a big bloated bureaucracy and Washington State's created one for us to downsize. Uh, question here, conservative ladies, do you think there's a path for a Republican to win the governor's race in 2024? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, it's going to take the right type of person. The one thing to remember and... Um, uh, Jesus may very well come and inspire you to run for office, but uh, he probably didn't inspire all 15 of you to run. And so one of the things I have to explain to some Republican candidates, especially for a statewide office, is that please stick to trying to come up with what your real plan would be if you think you're going to win. If you can't raise a lot of money running for a statewide office, please just don't run. Um, if you don't have a good set of experience and a communication skill set, that um, would allow you to communicate uh, on the issues that you need to, especially in a campaign, please don't run. If you don't like people, please don't run because in order to get elected, um, you need to like people, you need to like going out. I love Doorbell and Doorbell was, I like it. I still like it today. It's it's a great way to meet people. I like meeting people. That's a good, if you, if you like meeting people, I think you're gonna be a better person to running for office. 
And, uh, and I think that's important. So, um, but a Republican's going to have to, you know, be quick on their feet. They're going to have to have basically the whole skill set. Um, it's better if they come from already holding an elected office, just because that experience of running for office and the realities of what the campaign finance process is, they already know how to fundraise. They generally have some kind of support network. That's going to make you a much better and more effective candidate for office. And, um, you know, that's, that's what we need to see. Let's see. Um, uh, let me think. There's a lot of comments up here. Uh, so, okay, great. What are the odds to get Inslee and Ferguson to volunteer to go to Mars? Pretty low odds, I would say. Um, I uh, Here's some of the person who just found the channel. Um, okay. Uh, I, we're going live right now. So, uh, that's, so thanks for watching. Um, if you, uh, let me see, there's standard magazines. Um, yes, I know Nate's, Nate's memes. You said about their standard magazines. Of course they are. Um, they're not that I'm referring to the title that they give to the actual bill there, but a 30 round magazine is a pretty standard magazine. Uh, at least it's been standard for the last uh, 50 years. Um, you're late to the party, Nathan, but that's okay. We're glad to have you here. Um, <laughs> drum magazines. Okay. We're getting to a drum, a magazine size conversation here. Um, and by the way, so if you want to put a comment in, just go ahead and type it in below. Um, but, uh, questions are fine. I'm seeing a lot of thanks for what you do and thumbs up. That's great. But, uh, questions are probably what people want me to answer here. Um, uh, and again, Christopher, you asked a question that I just answered earlier. There is an opportunity for a Republican to win, uh, but we're going to have to not self-immolate along that way. Um, Martin Metz, do you see any promising Republican candidates to run for governor? Sure. I mean, there's there's always several promising candidates. Uh, probably the most discussed but not committed candidate um, that you're going to see in Washington state is, is obviously... Um, Jim Walsh, who's the legislator out of the 19th legislative district. And I would say he's discussed a lot because uh, by, by a conservative activist, and you'll hear a lot of people talk about him just because he's an effective communicator. He knows the issues and he travels around the state a lot and has for for many years. I mean, before he became uh, a state legislator, he's been a continuous person. You see, I, I travel about 40,000 miles a year driving around to speak and meet with activists and speak to groups. If you're on this channel from Spokane, you know it because I've been out there, I think about six times this year. Um, I've been in the Tri-Cities, I'm in Whatcom County, San Juan County, I'm all over the state, which is why I drive cheap, junky cars because I destroy them very quickly. And um, Jim is one of the only people I see everywhere. I mean, I see him frequently. So nights we're at the same places. So uh, in fact, I was just down in Tukwila emceeing for a Citizen Alliance for Property Rights uh, event just this weekend. And Jim got Legislator of the Year Award, well-deserved, and another award from a Spokane uh, County chapter of uh, Citizens Alliance for Property Rights at the same event. So that was kind of fun to see. So I see him a lot everywhere. So he's going to be kind of one of these names. There's Raul Garcia, who has not filed a PDC he has jumped into these races in the past. Uh, he's out of the Tri-Cities area as well. I think he could jump in. Semi Bird is already uh, running. Um, and there's other people whose names have been floated around, but but uh, those are the ones that I hear most commonly right now. Obviously, with this news pretty recently, I think you're going to see a lot more people decide that they're going to jump in. Um, we want you as a hatchet man. Jonathan, that's right. That's what I want to be. If we get a Republican governor in there, that's my job. I'm volunteering for that. Um, there's a bunch of state agencies that just need to be totally chopped down. And uh, there's probably about uh, 10 to 20,000 senior bureaucrats that need to lose their jobs and go get a real job somewhere. So um, somebody is asking me here, uh, give us your thoughts about the PD Public Disclosure Commission here, considering you're the expert in filing PDC complaints. Well, I, I don't know what you want me to say. I file complaints a lot. I just filed a couple yesterday. Um, it's something I just do out of habit. Uh, the Public Disclosure Commission is a great resource, by the way, pdc.wa.gov. Go there to take a look at it, because if you want to know who's filed for office and who's funding them, you'll get a lot of information from that website. It's really good. Um, and uh, just I mean, my theory on campaign finance law is that generally it's a restriction of free speech. But if they're going to exist, make them play by the rules. And if you can, try to reform those rules so they're the least abusive you possibly can be. I do track, in case you're interested, I just had a couple more um, um, public, can a couple more officials that got officially sanctioned by the PDC based on my complaints. So I think I'm up to 211, I think, right now of politicians that have gotten in trouble based on the complaints I filed against them. Um, 
the uh, most laws. Okay. What rifles? Here's another question, Jason. What rifles have you seen that are still legal? Most gun shops I have in won't sell any type of semi automatic rifles. That's the same thing I've seen. I, I started going around to a couple shops near me. Mostly I've been looking, they have hunting rifle, like the bolt action type rifles, and uh, they have shotguns and pistols generally. That's what I've been seeing when I've gone in there lately. But it's kind of new days on this. So I don't have all the information. I also don't know how long it's going to take for the first federal hearing on one of the lawsuits against the state. Um, um, thank you. Let's see. I've asked KCGOP and Caleb to quickly, this is John, uh, to quickly seize upon the opportunity to disenfranchise residents in Chinatown, offering offered to help go door to door. That's very frustrating. Uh, good point, but I'm going to tell you, don't let somebody else decide whether you're going to go out and be an activist where you live. I think that's one of the mistakes, for some reason, that conservatives make. Uh, go do it yourself. Don't wait for them. I wouldn't wait for anybody. Uh, if it's a good idea, just organize some people locally. Go door to door yourself. You don't have to wait for the party. And and you shouldn't wait for the party. Um, Jason, I found Sideshow Bob's theme song for this campaign. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. He might be too sexy for that shirt, but I don't even, I'm not even really confident that he's uh, that good of a chess player. But uh, nevertheless, that's what he likes to tell us. So we'll see. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see. Yes, I'm glad I came across your channel. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is the U.S. Attorney General in Washington a good guy or a swamp rat? Well, we actually have two U.S. Attorney Generals in Washington. Uh, one's usually assigned to kind of the western side of the state. The other one's assigned out of Spokane. Uh, I don't know the two that are in there right now. I've known some of them in the past. But my guess is that uh, since they've been appointed to the Biden administration right now, we probably don't really have aggressive U.S. attorney generals in, in position here right now. If you're asking me that question because you're presuming that they're going to actually go and prosecute um, Democrats for doing anything bad, I wouldn't say that's your direction to get uh, to, to get any help. Um, good question, though. A lot of people don't know about that difference. Um, we would love to have you uh, do an event and ha come to speak. This is from Conservative Ladies. Yes, I would, too. I, I do a lot of events. I just, uh, while I was waiting for this live stream to go live, I just confirmed a couple of other speaking engagements. I'm happy to come out and speak with any group that is uh, organized. It's kind of nice if you get a little bit bigger group uh, organized. Weekday nights are my preference or even luncheon events. I try to do stuff with my kids on the weekend if I can. I will do some weekend stuff, but um, but that's it. So uh, happy to come out and speak there. Um, I love Jim, but I don't think he stands a chance at King County, Seattle. They'll continually run a single gaffe, uh, and everyone here will eat them up. Um, they have to win the rest of the state entirely. Yeah, I, I think King County requires, listen, to somebody, I was fifth generation King County. I live in Thurston now, but my family's been there a long time. And uh, I don't think King County is specifically, Seattle's a little different, but King County, uh, you have to be willing to campaign in King County. And what happens is you get a lot of Republican candidates that have no idea what King County is about at all. So they don't campaign there. And so you have to spend a lot of time up there. Um, the one benefit Walsh would probably have is he's used to going all over King County on a regular basis. So it probably makes him pretty familiar with it. But um, but I, I like King County. I think King County is a fun place to uh, to campaign because there's a lot of opportunities to reach people who have never heard any kind of conservative liberty message. Um, walking, contradiction, love Renton. I used to live near there. So it's always good to see somebody from Renton. I was just up there a couple of days ago. Uh, is anyone going to challenge a new capital gains tax? Angela. Yes, they are. I'm expecting that to be a pretty significant initiative, and uh, I guarantee you that's going to happen. Uh, not only that, I anticipate that probably when they qualify for that, that's probably going to be on the ballot in 2024, which will make it a little bit easier for any Republicans that are running for office right now at that time. What about ballot harvesting? This is a question from Dan. Uh, ballot harvesting in our state is legal. It may be immoral, it may be unethical, but it's legal in our state. So uh, do it and do it often. Do it as often as you can. Uh, ballot harvesting is mostly just compiling and collecting all these ballots together, uh, making sure that you've got everybody who voted for them, and, uh, that you've got them all in hand. You go and you make sure they get counted or delivered to the auditor's office. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But um, this is the year of ballot harvesting. We might as well do it and uh, do it well. So um, so there's some interesting thoughts there. Breaking bolts. What are your thoughts on the two witness signature loophole? Washington State ballots and the fact the SOS doesn't track them or verify the signatures. Always had a problem with that for, ugh, it's been years now. 
that is a little loophole. It it's um and and it's a loophole because if somebody says they can't sign their name, they put an X just in case people don't know, and it means that you have two witness statements on your ballot. If you've ever seen in the back of a ballot, that's what that's for. And what this guy's pointing out here is that nobody verifies that the witness witnesses are real people, and so because they don't verify that, it creates a loophole where somebody can just make file fake ballots and have signatures that don't mean anything and just type might mark an X in there. Um, it is not true that people don't track that. We have tracked that in several counties. I don't believe the Secretary of State tracks it, but generally what they tell us right now is it's because there's so few of those filed. And um, I, I think they're probably right about that as far as there's not a large number of them, but I think it's an increasing number over time. This has been one of those little spotty things we've looked at. Uh, this has been over a decade since I have been looking at that one, and it'd be a nice one to change. Mismanagement of state funds has been rather disturbing. Well, welcome to bureaucracy is my description of government um, is now and probably will not change uh, is basically it's a, it's best understand government. It's a mountain of corruption and it's concealed by an ocean of incompetence. Now, that is my definition of government and bureaucracy. Um, I've never seen anything that makes me change that description. I might be a little nice when I use that, uh, but for those who just suddenly woke up and realized that the government's going to waste all your money every chance they get, I'm sorry, but uh we're popping your bubble and uh, that's just reality right now. Um, let's see, I, uh, let's see, State Supreme Court. So, um, I don't have, okay, rumor, I'm gonna look at your comments that have question marks at the end. Rumor has it that Jay Inslee won't run for governor next election. If true, uh, who do you think the next governor will be? Well, you missed it. Uh, it's not a rumor any longer. He went public with it. This is from Peter. He went public, he made that announcement. It's not a rumor. He's definitely not running again. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see where he ends up, but not that curious. And um, yeah, we mentioned that AG Bob Ferguson's announced. I'm assuming that Hillary Franz, the public lands commissioner right now, that she'll announce. Mark Mullet, who's a senator out of the fifth, has made rumors and talked to lobby world about running. There will probably be some others uh, on the Democrat side. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what I'm saying. Here's a question from Michael. We see memes regarding COVID and Nazis saying something like, if you wonder who would have complied in Nazi Germany, now you know. Makes me think of everyone keeping marijuana illegal. What say you? What say you about memes and Nazis? Well, I don't, you'll find that I don't usually use a lot of um, uh, comparisons to Nazism in most of my analogies, mostly because I don't find it to be an effective one. It's it kind of been so over abused and, and, and uh, used all the time that it doesn't seem like it's that effective of an analogy. Most people, um, the minute you, it's kind of this good one's law, right? Once you get to the uh, description of a, what a not that a Nazi, everybody's Hitler or something it, it, you just lose any value with that kind of an argument. So I don't generally use memes like that. Um, I don't find it to be effective. It is important though, to know your history and understand how you got there. And uh, you don't need to go back that far. Just go back a couple of years in our state. You have seen a lot of people make some pretty draconian decisions during the lockdowns that were absurd, ridiculous, uh, would violate all standards of norm, be, normal behavior, I think, be, uh, especially human to human behavior. Ferguson was a huge violator of every norm that I can imagine, destroying little businesses and mom and pop operations just for his own ego. And uh, it was ridiculous. And I think that we should never forget what we watched our government do in this state during that time. Conservative ladies got a question here. Do you think HB 1333 will be revived in January? It seems Bob would like that feather in his cap for campaign season. I don't know, but I will tell you HB 133, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of, it's not going to be the feather in Bob Ferguson's cap. It's probably more like the anvil around his neck. That was his effort to basically revive uh, 1984 and create his own ministry of truth in Washington state and didn't even get out of committee. It was so embarrassing. And I think the reason why I really didn't get out of committee despite the fact that Democrats control both houses, it didn't even go anywhere. And it was because it got a lot of national attention for just being such a ridiculous censorship tool. And running out of the AG's office was weird. And uh, Ferguson put his name on it. I mean, he owns this, uh, this bill completely. And it was a terrible idea, terribly, just a completely ridiculous idea. And it didn't even get out of committee. So it's dead for now. It, it technically, it still exists into the next legislative session. But uh, my guess is, as Ferguson's trying to run for office in 2024, he'll probably tone back his support and let it die. That'd be my guess if I was to predict anything, because um, 
he's got national ridicule uh, because of that. And I don't think the response was what he thought it was. It probably sounded cool to his le leftist friends up in Seattle and to Nick Hanauer and the billionaire crew up there that likes to come up with ways to hurt us. But I don't think it's been as good as he thought it would after that. Um, wondering about tips. This is from Sean. Uh, one wondering about tips for tracking down previously committed McNeil Island residents in our home county. Looks like public pressure brought down a house in Thurston County, and we're getting thirty. When you say we are getting thirty, Sean, I don't know which county you're talking about. Could be King uh, or uh, Pierce or Sohomish with that kind of number. Um, the tips are hard because what they've done at McNeil Island and how they release these violent sex predators. Uh, and I was involved in the, the stop sh helping shut down the Thurston County K, uh, house. That was about 12 miles from my place. Um, that house got shut down just because of public exposure and because of the open incompetence, corruption of the nonprofit that was going to be running it. And it's, it's kind of a big deal to, 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 succeed in that it wasn't about me. It was about these ladies that got involved nearby and they did a really good job. So, um, it's very hard. You have to pay attention to contracts that are issued by DSHS. And I think that's the shortest path to find where these McNeil Island residents are going to come, because otherwise you're only going to find them about a month after they've been moved into your neighborhood. And when they buy these homes, they're lying about the use of the homes. They're coaching whoever the property owner is to lie about what they're using it for. They're going to say, oh, we're using it for assisted living or something else, but that's not really what they're doing. They pay a lot of money for this. Um, Sorry, it just keeps running up here. Um, this is funny. Um, Jacob, you're asking <coughs> who's the least bad potential Democratic candidate for governor. I've only mentioned three. Uh, these are only three I've heard about. <coughs> of the three of them, Mark Mullet would probably be the least worst, probably the least likely to prevail. Franz is arguably a little bit better, maybe, than uh, than Ferguson. But Franz is no, uh, you know, both of these people, Franz and Ferguson, right? These will be the two new F words in Washington state's uh, political vocabulary here going into this governor's race for next year. Um, neither of them are good. I mean, Franz might be nominally less destructive, openly destructive to freedom and liberty in the state. She's not particularly good as a person in that position, but uh, we'll see. So that's my opinion there. Um, I'm see, I'm dropping down here because otherwise I'm going to lose these questions. What do you think of the smart city limitations? This is North Song. And uh, I think the terrible smart city limitations, this is like having a jurisdiction where uh, theoretically everything's within a 15 minute walk. And smart city limitations, most a lot of them also impose a lot of surveillance tools in there. And obviously, I don't like anything that reeks of Big Brother and central planning disasters, which is what it does leak of. It's kind of this old uh, um, twenty city of 2030. I mean, there's a whole bunch of these central planning schemes. If you want to see what it looks like in our state, just read the Growth Management Act and the spinoff versions of that that have come out of the lawsuits and some of the other issues since then. I'm not a fan. I'm always eternally opposed to them, especially as they restrict your freedom of movement and they restrict your property rights and a number of other problems that, that exist there. Um, Inslee stepping down is the best thing he's done for Washington. Yeah, probably. But to be fair, he's, this is from Nathan. Uh, he probably thinks he's done as much damage as he can do. And now he's looking for the next pot of gold somewhere. Uh, I'd be a, very interested to see who actually hires him because he's pretty incompetent. So, um, uh, Hawk fan, yes, you're late. Uh, I've made lots of comments about Inslee leaving office. I, when, when we planned this, by the way, that I didn't know that was on the agenda for this weekend when I planned to have this, uh, do this live stream. So it was kind of convenient that happened to hit, but uh, it's, um, I've had a lot of comments about him so far. Um, any opinion on Joe Canton, if he can win in 2024, this is a question from Peter. Well, Peter, that's interesting. I think that's, um, uh, Joe Candace in the third congressional district, or he was a candidate in the third congressional district, uh, which is where I live. I'm actually in the very North part of that district, kind of Southwest Washington. And it was very disappointing to see him lose in the general just recently. Now the challenge that Joe Kent has, and, and I, you know, I, Joe and I just did an event uh, in Lewis County together, the Lewis County Republicans. In fact, Joe, if you're watching this or somebody else's, I think Joe and I are, we, we are doing a dinner together with somebody that won an auction item there. And I think that's coming up this month. But um, so I'll ask Joe when I see him there uh, and talk to him about this. But essentially, it's not a secret. Um, 
the uh, political establishment is going to generally be viewing Joe Kent's campaign skeptically because it is a district where I live, the congressional district, that's considered like a plus five Republican that's maybe plus four. It's it's uh, a Republican lean congressional district that's getting more Republican as each week goes by. So how he lost that race, at least the uh, to the uh, Republican establishment, and they're going to be very upset about putting money and support behind him, even though they kind of undermined him. So he's going to have his challenge that is cut out for him is really dealing with that issue, uh, being able to raise a lot more money right now, maintain the momentum that he had to come out of the primary last time to try to do it again. And of course, whenever you have these nasty primaries, and that one was a nasty primary, especially with the consultants that seem to be flooding into the zone on that one right now, it's just going to be nasty. So um, we'll just see how it goes. I really don't know, but it's it's going to be tough. Joe's got his work cut out for him, and he's already running, so I'm pretty sure there's nothing secret about um, what he's planning to do there. Um, let's see. I don't know the Jonathan, you keep asking me some questions about would it be smart to collect hundred plus signatures before filing with the U S attorney general, instead of filing by myself. I don't know what you're talking about on that. So you'll have to clarify. Maybe you did down here below, but I didn't see it. Um, uh, thoughts on planning to win versus beliefs as policy. It's a question from John um, coming out as pro-life in Washington is the end of any attempt at challenging Democrats. Well, I don't think that's necessarily true, um, but it does probably depend on how you sell, how you talk about that issue. If you're um, if you aren't willing to stand behind your convictions, I think you shouldn't be pretending like you have them. And I don't think you should come out and claim that you have them if you don't. And you should probably try to avoid talking about things if you don't know what you're talking about, at least a little bit. Um, Again, rules are different for Democrats versus Republicans. They talk about things they don't know about all the time. Um, do you think we'll ever see a writing candidate win a major state election, i.e. governor, state rep, attorney general? No. Uh, this is a question from Farah. No, you won't see a writing candidate win those types of positions. Listen, the closest thing anybody got was in 2012 when Sharon Hannock ran for the state treasurer, if I remember right, state, state treasurer. And it was actually a write-in in in the primary, which is about the only time it ever makes sense. And it was because the Republicans didn't have anybody on the ballot at all. And so they had one Democrat versus nobody for a statewide office. So she ran a write-in campaign during the primary. She got about 35,000 people to write her name in, give or take. And uh, what happens is all you have to do is get over 1%, 1.5%, I think, of the total um votes cast as write-ins and they'll put you then on the ballot for the general, which is how she got on the general Sharon Hannock in 2012. That is a little different than, than a write-in who actually wins the race. The, the, uh, when you saw the state treasurer, Rob Chase, sorry, county treasurer, Rob Chase in Spokane, that's how he won that race too. He was a write-in candidate during the primary, got through the primary, and then he actually won in the general. You're not going to win for the general as a write-in. What's for dinner tonight? Aardvark, you asked me, and I have no idea. I haven't, haven't been home, and uh, it'll be whatever's in the fridge because it's going to probably be leftovers tonight. Uh, Blue Moon, you're asking a question. Will the state ever split? The answer is probably not, even though people always say that, and they want to, and I totally understand the cultural divide. But really, it's more of a rural-urban divide than anything else. Uh, and the reason why I say that is there's almost very there's very little between the culture where I live in South Houston County or Lewis County and the culture that I see when I'm in eastern Washington where a lot of my family lives as well. But... Um, they it would the legal hurdles you have to go through are pretty dramatic and they're not going to willingly do that just like oregon's having the same issue down below um the uh charles hedrick have you had a chance to reach out to brandy cruz seems like you two would be able to put together a good live show interview I, i've spoken to brandy many times um i don't think i've been on her show at least not re i don't think i've been on her show since she set up her new program um, but I'd be happy to, uh, Brandy's easy to talk to and we have differences of opinions and that'd probably make it kind of interesting. Um, let's see, let's see. Let me keep looking down here. Questions. You're in the Portland area. Correct. N no. Well, I live in South Thurston County, which is about 30 minutes South of the, of uh, Olympia where I do my filming here is in Clark County, which is a little bit further South than that close to Portland, but it's, it's uh, North of the river which still put just into Washington. So um, let's see, I guess, uh, let me, let's see, I don't trust Inslee. He's got, okay, this is funny. Yeah, cabin fever, Nana. I don't trust Inslee and I don't either. Uh, he's got something up his sleeve. Of course he does. Could he be running to replace Murray or Cantwell? He seems too arrogant to lose as much attention. Good point, but I, I don't know. Um, I really think Inslee's going to chase the dollar more than anything else right now. But 
Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, he's not super confident or capable. He did try to uh, fish, send his name into D.C. to get a job there. And nobody really wants him to work for him. And his one percent that he got when he ran for president is hardly inspiring for people to actually want to hire him. So I don't think Inslee's got a lot of other future options. I'm sure that he'll be stuck in some kind of money grubbing opportunity, but it's going to be just a pasture, putting him out to pasture after he's been in office. Um, how marijuana is still as illegal or criminalized or demonized as it is. Okay, here's a question. So this is Michael. Uh, despite that most of us consume it, yet it's still a political and legal issue. Um, well, I mean, fair, to be fair, I don't I don't consume marijuana myself, so it's it's legal. Uh, I know plenty of people that do consume it, um, and uh, it's I don't think it's been that we're in a state that it's not criminalized or probably demonized that much, um, but it's going to always be part of the reason why it's still federally illegal. So the, all the crime that's still associated with it in our state is mostly because there's, it's a cash heavy business, right? So people are trying to use it as an opportunity to steal. Um, well, let's see why I think Doug Cobb, I think your question here is why state RNC, which I think you mean Republican national committee, which is a little different. It's Washington state Republicans is rhino. Um, you know, obviously I'm a, listen, I'm a Republican PCO where I live. Uh, I don't consider myself a rhino. Uh, and most Republican activists I know probably wouldn't, but, uh, anyway, so it's just kind of, um, it, it's, uh, I don't know what, how to answer that question. Cause I think the Republicans are made up of a wide spectrum of people in the party. Uh, here's some other people asking about where I'm at. Hopefully I answered the question. I'm not in Tumwater. I don't live in Tumwater. I live South of Tumwater. I live kind of between the Rochester to Nino area and the rural areas. Uh, why the Republican party doesn't flip the state. Good question. They have a lot of work to do. Um, uh, let's see. Are there any lessons to be learned from last year's election? I'm assuming you mean, uh, 2022. Yes, there is. But one of the lessons is um, that should be learned is uh, you shouldn't ever hire any of the Republican consultants that exist in our state. They're really bad and terrible and pretty much every one of them fails. It seems to be a primary job description there. But beyond that, there's some basic rules about campaigning that people just need to relearn sometimes. And I don't know why that's uh, why we have to keep doing that information uh you know what any specific concerns regarding the legislation regarding election information accessible that's 5159 and that was a bill i believe that did pass and um yeah i always have concerns anything that makes the election process less less transparent and more opaque opens the door to all kinds of problems so i'm not a fan of any of that um somebody here asking about refusal host uh, refusal of oaths of office from a local level all the way up to the current vice president is where everybody can follow this information. Some about hosts of oath of office. I, you know, I encourage people to get who go down these rabbit holes on oath of office or um, other things. I definitely try to be focused on practical things where you uh, where you work. JTB, how can we get rid of mail in voting? Well, either there's two ways. Either it's going to get rid of it by federal rules that have nothing to do with Washington, or you're going to have to get some different people in the legislature who are willing to put it in. So that's your only way you're going to get rid of it. And it needs to be gotten rid of. Um, I think I've already answered that question. Um, okay. Uh, millennial new to politics. There's a Hawk fan question here about did 1299 come to a vote by the people? Can you briefly explain how these bills can be passed without a vote? Uh, I'm assuming that question has to do with a initiative. Um, legislation that is assigned a bill number to it. So House and Senate, SB or HB, whatever the number is. Um, those bills require a vote of the legislature, both houses. They have to come to agreement on it. Then it has to go be signed by the governor. Civics 101 here. And I know it says millennial new to politics, but um, that's how any piece of legislation that comes out of the out of the Capitol, that's how it's supposed to come out. The option of having the initiative process, which is where citizens can propose ideas, is a little bit, a lot more hoops you have to jump through. There's two versions of it. One that goes directly to the people. If you collect enough signatures right now, it's about um, 325,000 signatures you'd have to collect in order to get it on the ballot. You have to do it just in a few months. By July, you'd have to have the, all those signatures collected. And then you could vote on it that November. And that's one way to bypass the legislature and the governor's office. Another option is you can do an initiative to the legislature, which is the people say, hey, I want the legislature to sign this bill into law. You collect the same amount of signatures spread over uh, till the end of the year. And then you collect those signatures and you take that initiative, that, that 
piece of legislation. It goes to the legislature. If they don't want to do it, it ends up on the ballot the next year. If they do want to do it, it becomes law instantly. The governor doesn't sign it. That's how that works. I'm Hopefully, I'm answering that question. Um, when is the next time that we, the public, can meet you and chat in person? This is a question from Jonathan. Jonathan, I, I actually do a lot of events around the state. Um, I have an event this Saturday in Spokane where I'll be speaking at the Spokane um, uh, Citizens Lodge Property Rights event in, at the lunch. And I'm actually going to be at the uh, Republican um, dinner that night down in the Tri-Cities. I think that's in Kennewick. And so those are probably the easiest next two times. But I constantly do a lot of these events. I'm going to be at the Pierce. I think I'm the MC for the Pierce County Republicans event coming up on the 20th. There's several in June. I'm, I'm at quite a few of them. Uh, so if you want to bring me to a speaking engagement that you're organizing with a bunch of other people, just contact me. Um, uh, my email is glenn at wethegoverned.com. Not a secret. It's pretty out in the open. Glenn, G-L-E-N, at wethegoverned.com. In fact, I'll type it in. If somebody can type it in here, um, uh, Jordan, if you're hearing me over there, if you want to type in my email address here. But I feel free to email me if you want to do a speaking engagement. And I'll see if it, if I don't already... If I'm not already committed on one, I can do that. Um, what is your opinion on Sheriff Sanders? Oh, good question. So I have a little bit of experience here with this. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with Sheriff Sanders in Thurston County uh, so far. I, um, listen, I'd known John Snaza since he was elected in 20, uh, 2010. Uh, obviously, I've supported his brother, Rob Snaza, who's a sheriff down in Lewis County. Um, but I had known John Sansa quite a bit. And when he had his, when John had his motorcycle accident, I know things changed quite a bit for him. Sheriff Sanders ran a pretty aggressive campaign and he got in. And, uh, what I've liked about him, he was super helpful in jumping in on the sex predator house that Inslee and Ferguson wanted to create in Southerson County. Sanders was on the right side of this, did a great job pushing back on it. And what I really appreciate about him According to other deputies that I've spoken to in the, the Thurston County Sheriff's Office, he seems to be willing to go aggressively, use every way he can to stop some of the violent criminals that are coming out there. And it's just, you know, it's just sometimes you new people coming into office, younger people, they're going to hit hard and hit it running. And so far, he's been doing a really good job. Uh, and I'm happy to see that. That that makes me very happy. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to. I bet Inslee would go to work for the tribes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, who knows? We'll see what he does. Uh, Inslee is basically a wish list Gavin Newsom. This is from Nate's memes. I agree. Uh, Inslee and, and Gavin Newsom. Ga Inslee was kind of like this pale imitation for Gavin Newsom. Newsom would do something and Inslee would follow. And uh, Or somebody in D.C. would tell Inslee, do the stupidest thing you can find and think of to do. And Inslee is always willing to do that if he thinks he, he has a job. So it's kind of funny. Um uh, did you hear about the Oregon Secretary of State who resigned today? I did not. I kind of heard something about it, but I didn't hear anything. So I'm sorry. I can't chat much about that. Um, uh, from Greg, what can we do to win city councils and school boards? Well, this is easy. Number one, uh, we have to actually start running for these positions. I was just meeting with a bunch of school board candidates just recently. And remember, in Washington State, officially, the filing week starts in just two weeks in uh, May. And you can officially file to run for office. You can still start running sooner, but you have to file the Public Disclosure Commission. But you can you can file officially with the secretary of state and your local auditor then and you got to run number one number two go to these meetings and actually uh study what they're doing you only have to go to two or three meetings you'll start to get a handle on the issues and the policies that kind of come before those elected bodies at the city council and the school board level especially and this includes pud commissions fire commissions things like this um, this is a good place to get started. If you think you want to get into politics, start there. Don't just run for governor or run for Congress. Start at a local level and get a better sense of what the process is like, not just the uh, process of campaigning, but what the process of governing actually looks like when you get in there. And uh, it'll help you kind of get your feet um, underneath you as far as the process to make change when you want to go in there and make those changes. So, uh, But you have to get out there and get involved. It doesn't take massive amounts of money. It does take a dedication. You have, to, you have to run for office and take it seriously. Um, the one thing I remember when I ran uh, ran for office the first time was there's no more date night. There's no I'm missing most of the stuff with my kids. Um, I'm not taking vacation. I'm not going anywhere. I am every single day. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm finding a way to run for do something that day to run for office. And um, and I think that's the path to success if you actually want to win. And uh, please don't run if you don't want to win. If you want to run, if you're going to run, give us a reason to vote for you. Get out there and do a good job. Uh, which do you think is the more winnable chamber, the House or the Senate in the state? Um, the House in some ways is easier. This is a good question John Connolly asked. Um, 
usually the house is a little bit easier um, just because you have a two bites of the apple. Every legislative district in Washington state, there's one state senator, two state reps there. Um, you have 48 districts in the state and the um, or 49, sorry, 49. Um, but you have a chance to uh, run for more seats there in the house. I think the house is a little bit easier to flip, but it does take planning. And there's a lot of seats right now that should be vulnerable. A lot of Democrat held seats should be vulnerable if Republicans run good campaigns and do a serious, uh, serious effort. Um, witness loophole. Okay. Breaking bolts question. This is an SOS question. Um, witness loophole. I've queried several counties and state OS, SOS. They tell me that they don't keep track of how many are submitted advice and how I might find that information. Okay. So one way you can do that is actually just file, get a, get a copy. I, oh, they just changed the law on this too. You used to be able to get copies of the envelopes. And I think you'd be able to see if they mark the X and whether they had witness uh, signatures there. That's one way you can do it arduous, very difficult. It's kind of a pain. Um, talk to some of the counties that have um, that actually have auditors that care about uh, open and fair elections. I would say Kittitas, probably Grays Harbor, um, uh, Franklin County right now, um, uh, Mason County. Uh, auditors like this uh, are probably willing to, and there's there's a couple others that are actually, they, they probably find ways because that's not a secret sauce sort of information and they should be able to uh, expose that. Um, how did the approval of a safe state for all transgender and paid healthcare services? What? I don't know. That's Jeff. You, Jerry, I'm not sure what question you're asking there. Um, Teresa, you asked a question. Do you think Jim Walsh will run for governor? I don't know. I just His name is bandied about. And the last time we were just speaking at an event this Saturday in Tukwila and people came out and openly were asking him to run for governor, which, by the way, I'm going to explain this to you. Everybody always asks you to run for office and it's one way or another. It doesn't mean you should, but it he's getting a lot of pressure on him. So, and I'm sure it's in the top of his mind. So we'll see what happens. Um, Lotus Rose, you said, have you seen the increase of citizen journalists using the first amendment to record public officials in their public capacity? Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, I've seen that. Uh, I've done it. I, I've recorded um, public officials many times as a citizen journalist in public settings. It's not unusual. It's fairly common. And uh, it's it's good anyway, because if you want to quote them, uh, you should record it so you can make sure your quotes are accurate and you've accurately tracked for uh, what's going on. Um, SB 5599. Oh, OK. So this is Hawk fan. You were wrong about 1299. Well, that makes a lot of sense. 5599. I don't see many talking about it. And it seems very dangerous. Yeah, it was a terrible bill. This is the one that the state uh, basically can. Uh, somebody can encourage your kid to run away from home. They can put them in a non nonprofit housed facility and then keep it secret from you, which is why I'm specifically calling that state sanctioned kidnapping, because if somebody else has your kid and they're keeping it secret, that they even have them or where they're at. That is that is the definition of kidnapping. And there's no good reason. In fact, the law, the way they wrote that law, there's no real good reason for them to be there, except that they need to, they, they'll give them, um, uh, like they'll, they'll do all kinds of this, uh, they call it gender affirming surgeries, but essentially it's mutilation and irreversible surgeries or drugs that they would give them under that setting. And it, it's, a, it's a terrible idea. It's ripe for abuse. It's, it's a ridiculous thing. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be allowed. And uh, Glenn at WeTheGovern.com. Hey, thanks for putting that up there. That's my email in case you need to reach out to me. Uh, question, do you think the governor after Jay Inslee will be even more far left and incompetent? Um, it's going to be really difficult for them to find anybody more incompetent than Governor Inslee. Uh, so I, I think that that would be a dangerous assumption. They might be more far left. I hope they aren't. So the one benefit that we had of having an Inslee, Governor Inslee was so incompetent, he was also lazy. And I think that that kind of slowed down the process, of some of the bad ideas they had. But because he was incompetent and not that bright, I think he was manipulated easily as well. And so that's kind of an issue. And I would prefer just to have somebody in there who cares about freedom and liberty. But we have to run real campaigns to actually get somebody like that in there. Um, Greg, you're saying, what can we do to win city councils, which I've kind of discussed, but we do need to, to focus on local offices. Not, I mean, there's, we don't ha have people who care about freedom and liberty in many of those offices. Those are good places to start. Uh, frankly, you, you demonstrate to the people who have elected you whether or not you're serious about uh, the tasks that set before you and whether or not they did a good job electing you in the first place, you're going to demonstrate to the people whether or not you're somebody who actually stands up for the right things and you're willing to do the work to get it fixed. And you're going to demonstrate to people whether you're um, a weirdo or, or a strange person, right? So 
Um, that's why people oftentimes when they, they'll elect somebody to higher office, more likely if they've held a lower office before. So um, that's pretty common. How in the world was Inslee allowed to be governor for a third time? Is there not rules? This is by Jerry Wright. Um, this has came out. I don't know how this got out there somehow. Um, there's no term limits in Washington state at the state level. There isn't period. Not at all. So it's not in the constitution and it doesn't exist. There's no term limit. So that there's no rule that they, he would have to leave. It's just usually people didn't want to be in there longer than two, two terms. So there was no rule violation when he did that. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. How many times are y'all going to skip me? Who's this? Uh, Michael, your question keeps repeating itself. And I think I answered it last time about all about pot. So pot and marijuana, it's legal. I don't know what there is to talk about anymore, other than the fact that it's kind of weird, the banking system that they had set up. Uh, it uh, the, the fact that the feds have it illegal, make it so that it's almost impossible to do banking. And because of that, there's a lot more crime uh, associated with it. Um, but that's, that's going to be, uh, as more and more states legalize marijuana, my guess is that's going to probably keep, that's going to change. And they'll probably have, um, uh, they'll probably make something different about that. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm literally, okay. Okay. There's complaints about me not getting a question. Um, let's see. Article two, section one of the Washington state constitution protects the people's right to vote on any and all bills, uh, laws and legislation that the government wants to pass. This is from Adam. Okay. That's true. I will point out though, here's a little, um, and this is really more of an abuse of the administrative state question. Now we're getting into the, this is the meat, I think, of sometimes the abuse of bureaucracy and government in our, in our state and in all states and at the federal level, especially. And it's really the blow to the administrative state. So you only see these RCWs or the federal level, whatever legislation comes out of Washington, D.C. What you don't see is the even greater tome of um, let's rulemaking that occurs below the officially approved legislation. Now that rulemaking in Washington states, uh, they call it Washington administrative code is a whack. And those rules never are voted by anybody. They aren't voted by you and I, and they aren't voted on even by our elected officials. They're created entirely by the administrative state as a way to interpret or provide, um, you know, structure to whatever the piece of legislation that was passed. And it's become kind of this bloat in, in growth of government. There's a lot of reforms that I would do. I mean, number one, I think I would make every whack that it's a requirement that the, the, your state legislature has to vote on every individual whack. I think that's critical because it's the only way to control them. Um, that's one of the ways of just keeping it from being abused. Um, at the federal level, it's even worse and even more bloated. And But again, I would make them do the same thing there because we shouldn't just we shouldn't have any uh, uh, basically agencies create their own rules without at least some level of oversight. And right now, if you've ever tried to do a petition change a rule, uh, which I have before, or a petition to uh, eliminate a rule or any of that stuff, it, it's very much set up in a way that the citizen has very little control over making an impact on that. I still like filing those. Those are good to file, but it's, it's hard to get it through. Um, uh, let, let's, let's see. Any thoughts on First Amendment auditors? Uh, random personal questions. Rights are like muscles, and that's a way I've seen them used. Um, First Amendment auditors. I, I don't know what you mean by First Amendment auditors. So um, uh, we'll have to get into that more. You'll have to either explain it to me in another comment down below so I understand what you're asking about. But um, uh, Shy Girls channel here, we need to be sure these people are taking their oaths of office. There's only one common intention why these people are not taking theirs. I think. Um, Okay, so let me explain. Oath of office. When I uh, was elected to the school board, uh, we we took an oath of office every time. I was elected twice, and I took it twice and had to sign it officially. You essentially, your oath of office is to uphold the Constitution federally and the state Constitution. Um, basically, that's that's I'm simplifying it here, but. Uh, and it's in writing and it's not secret and it's public and anybody can get a copy of the oath of office I signed and the oath of office that anybody else signed. So. Um, Anyway, that's lame answer. Michael, you didn't like my answer. Okay. I don't, I don't know how, uh, what else to tell you there. Um, uh, not guaranteeing that you like my answers. I'll do my best, but there's no guarantee that you like them. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, do you think that 2024 will have a summer of love riots like what we had in 2020? This is from Peter. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, it all depends on if the left thinks that there's some, you know, the Antifa kind of crew decides there's some kind of um, benefit they think they can get out of that. Uh, they do like to have riots periodically whenever they whenever they need to. And uh, with mostly peaceful riots, of course, mostly peaceful arson with mostly peaceful murder and, and destruction that, that they wage there. Um, right now, we don't see too much of that. I would guess that in 2024, if, if uh, the country elects a Republican, I'm sure they'll have riots everywhere. That's just how it goes. Um, let's see. Let's see. There's a new gun store. This is from Will Patterson. There's a new gun store opening in Lacey on Friday. It's a local figure. <laughs> much importance, I'm not. But uh, I, thanks for the thought, but I'm not that important. It'd be really cool to see you support a local business that Bobby Ferguson hates. Yeah, I'd love to stop by and see it. Let me know uh, which gun shop that is, and I'd be happy to come by and, and do it. Um, let's see. I'll check them. Let's see. Hawk fan. Uh, I'll check them out. I love citizen journalists. I like citizen journalists, too. Uh, Ryan Johnson is Culp running again, not to my knowledge. Um, I haven't heard anything about him. He, he did run for a Congress in the uh, fourth congressional district and didn't do that well there. So uh, it, I don't think that he's likely to run again, but uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, I have not. Okay. Here's somebody saying, I have not watched your video yet on Bob Ferguson's revenge book. Well, you'll have to watch it. It's a, it's a good one. Of course, by the way, as a follow up on that video, I did file a records request with him to get a copy of his revenge book and he's denying that he has it anymore, which is uh, funny to me actually, but, um, it was seen by other people. So it's not like it doesn't exist, but I'm sure he's doesn't want to admit it. Um, Ryan Johnson asking, um, who's running on the Republican side? Again, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but uh, officially, I think um, Semi Bird is the only Republican who's officially filed who's raised any money. Um, just because somebody puts their name in there doesn't mean much, but he's he's raised some a little bit of money, about fifty thousand dollars, I think. Um, the uh, but that's the only one so far. There'll obviously be more, I, I would expect. Um, Jay, what kind of revenge will Bob Ferguson take? Well, that's a good question. But since he's the attorney general, usually his revenge is involved in using some of his 600 attorneys to come after you for whatever excuse he can come up with. Got to remember that old communist sort of um, statement, right? Show me the man, I'll find the crime. That's Ferguson's attitude when it comes to you and I. So that's how he does it. Um, uh, let's see. Any thoughts on the recent legislation 55077 regarding universal commercial code and how it might be moving towards central bank digital currency uh, from breaking bolts? Uh, yeah, that I don't I didn't like that idea. There's a Senate bill actually that came out. Now, a lot of the people that's there were a couple of Republicans that had signed on to that one and they were saying that that's not what it does. So there's a bit of an argument over it. But uh, any I hate the idea of a central bank digital currency. I think it's a terrible idea. So anything that even remotely opens the door in that direction, I would reject. And I think some of the people that were voting, one of the things you have to remember, these legislators get these bills. None of them write the bills that they have sponsored. They're all written by somebody else, usually uh, lobbyists or some lobbying group. Um, heck, I, I've tried to come up with draft ideas for freedom in the past. And so, you you know, they a lobbyist will walk that around Olympia and they'll they'll get somebody to sign on to it. And that's a sponsor bill and it goes in there. Most of the time, the if they're a good legislator, they'll read it and they'll understand it. Uh, and uh, they'll still make mistakes. Sometimes they'll sign on to something they don't understand. Um, that piece of legislation, I think, is classic as the type of piece of legislation that probably none of them read, don't understand, and they just believe whatever they're told it means, and that's how they sign it. I, I know that sounds ugly and, and terrible when it comes to the legislative process, but that's it's just it's pretty busy to get thousands of bills pro, you know proposed. Of only about fifteen percent of those bills are actually going to get through and actually end up on the governor's desk. In fact, I wanted I've, I've intended to do a video about all of the stupid and dumb bad ideas that looked like they were going to go somewhere when they were filed, but then they just died before they went anywhere. We talked about uh, 1333, Bob Ferguson's Ministry of Truth bill that was killed in committee. There's a number of others that are like that. And so it's kind of worth covering the fact that you can propose all kinds of crazy, dumb ideas you want. But most of them, even in the current makeup of two houses that are dominated by Democrats, they still don't necessarily get through. Most of the bad ones did not get through. A couple bad ones did, but those most of them did not. Um, and uh, so anyway, unfortunately, though, 5077 went through. Um, yeah, there's still early. Glenn, you should run for governor. Listen, I, I know a lot of people think I should run for governor. Um, I don't think I should run for governor. 
I'll tell you what my dream job would be is to be hired by the guy who wins uh, the governor's seat because uh, I would be the person who would happily go in and chop the heck out of agencies and and a whole bunch of them, I hope, and chop them down, cut them off. And uh, that's really what I would I've always wanted to do is to go in and just clean house. I think that's a really good task. That would be my task, not running for office, doing that. That would be my task. I'd be enjoying that quite a bit. Okay, KP Gunworks, Will Patterson, I see that. It's off 108 near the target. Okay, I'll try to uh, come up there. Let me know when it's actually opening, but I'm sure I can probably look that up. Um, um, all right, thank you guys for kind words here. Um, okay, legislators want to change the age from eight years old to five years old so parents can't take a kid out of school to be homeschooled. What's going on with the schools? Well, great question. Okay, all four of my kids um, are in, or one of them is currently graduating from uh, public school right now, Rochester, in, in the Rochester area. One of my kids is in Tumwater. And um, the and my wife is a public school teacher. She used to teach in Bellevue and teaches now locally. So what I find is that uh, if you look at, um, if you look at how, uh, the public school system's going right now, it's, it's, it's going downhill fast. And COVID accelerated it. The, the dissent was already in place. But after COVID, I think a lot of people got a chance to see just how bad the education, the practical education is they're getting from their kids, mainly because they could see it on Zoom and they find out the education is not that great. Here's the other big problem. And it's demonstrated by every measurable test score that you have. Uh, basic math, basic functional literacy, sciences, everything everything's collapsing right now in Washington state, every measurable standard. That's why the OSPI is like burying the stats as deep as they can. Chris Reichel, who's head of OSPI, was formerly in Tumwater School Board, uh, was formerly in the state legislature, has done a miserable and terrible job there as OSPI. I mean, it's, I couldn't even imagine somebody doing more harm to the school district than this, than to school kids generally than this guy has. Um, and under his watch, it's gotten as bad as it's ever been in recent times, for sure. So what's happening is about 41,000 families have pulled their kids out of public school. Either they've sent a private school or they're homeschooling, either way. And um, But the other thing is they've dumbed down a lot of the standards that they had in the school system right now. And that's something you don't even see as a parent necessarily. You'll think, oh, my kid came out in history and U.S. history, and it's just like the U.S. history of his sibling five years ago. No, it's not. They had 49 points of requirements back then. Now they only have 20. Uh, AP classes are being taken out. Um, there's that current trend now where the, everybody's the same. They mush them all together. For a while, they were trying to do these this idea of grit and um, rigor in the school system. That was a big push when I was on the school board. It was it came up in every single school board meeting that we had as we were pushing for more grit, kids that could last longer in the school system and have more rigor in their education. And of course, um, that's uh, gone completely opposite. And really COVID is what just completely collapsed it off the system. So I think you're gonna see a lot more people pulling kids out of the school and uh, we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, Let's see, Future 42. Move. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with Future 42. Mostly that's an effort to try to restore some sanity in government. Uh, Brandy Cruz is part of, I think she is part of that. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, Oceana 23. Oh, Inslee was kind of a dope, but Ferguson just seems evil. Yeah, I don't dispute that. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know if you would know anything about this topic, but when do you think the ILWU and the PMA will sign their union contract? <laughs> no idea. Can't answer that question. Sorry about that. Um, is Ellen, is there any support for a gold and silver as currency in Washington? Not officially. I've never seen it, but I think a lot of gold and silver gets sold in the state. So um, the, believe it or not, Washington state's actually historically had uh, silver and gold mines, especially in eastern Washington. And uh, um, so, but we don't, our state's not been friendly to mining lately. Um Let's see, would Joe Kent run? I think I already talked about that. So if, you, if you're if you asking more stuff about Joe Kent, um, you're going to be seeing him uh, go back to my earlier part of this question. Um, let's see. Small g. Let's see. Why is Inslee not running for a fourth term? There has to be some nefarious reason. This is by Joe Blow. Um, I don't know if there's a nefarious reason, but 
you know, Inslee uh, does seem to be primarily focused on causing as much damage as he could. I personally, I think he's getting bored with his office. And so I think he's leaving because of that. And he thinks he's got some, uh, you know, cushy sort of thing that he can jump into. When you've been around Inslee up at the Capitol, it doesn't seem like he likes his job or cares about what he's doing much. So um, I don't know how nefarious that is, but it's, you know, I, I will see what he ends up doing. Um should Tiffany Smiley run for governor is a question from Tony. I don't know. I mean, that's up to her. I don't think she will. Um, the, uh, you know, her, the results that she had in a statewide race wouldn't generally support running again. That's just how it is. If you were within like a teeny, just a couple points, maybe, but probably not. Um, that would be generally what I would think. Uh, yes, more government equals more problems, less government equals less problems. Um, Oh, this is a funny question. Any way we can get the Tonino wooden dollar back by gold, backed by gold and silver? I don't. Peter, you're asking some pretty interesting questions there. No, but Tonino is near me, the city of Tonino, and so they're famous for their wooden currency that they produce back in the uh, 1930s and even currently. So it's kind of a fun thing. Um, uh, Teresa Johnson, you're asking why not Culp again? Because he uh, did very poorly, actually, in that last uh, uh, congressional race. And one of the things you have to do if you're going to run for governor is you have um, you need to raise to be able to raise money. And uh, maybe I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just I haven't seen him file and there hasn't been any talk about him running uh, the lately. The last time I think I talked to him, that wasn't in the cards back then either. So I don't know. I just don't see it likely right now. Um, the 7% capital gains tax, is that official question mark? This is by Ryan Johnson. And is there a way to get that overturned? I remember, uh, right. The majority vote against it, but like the car tabs, he sh shoved it through. Okay. The capital gains tax is, um, has had this long, brutal path in our state. It's a terrible idea. Um, and it's been pushed through by, I think, a very corrupt decision by the state Supreme Court at the end of the day, because it was legally challenged. And that's where it went. And the Supreme Court the fix was in and they decided that they would somehow allow it by inventing a new definition for excise tax that never doesn't exist anywhere else in the country. Um, and obviously, it's just about getting grabbed. It's a cash grab. Right. And the question is, is there a way to get that overturned? Absolutely. It'll probably be an initiative. Um, I'm almost per guaranteed you're going to be seeing people collect signatures on these initiatives this year. And it would probably be initiatives to the people, which would go or to the legislature, which would then go on the ballot next year in 2024. So whoever, whatever Republican is running next year, you'll probably be sharing the ballot with a couple of initiatives that are going to be very popular with people who want to shrink the size of government. So um, that's, that's how it's happening. Uh, I see Vicki made some comment about she is starting to pack to fund candidates. That's the pack that um, uh, Smiley starting. I think that's what you're referencing. That's true. She is starting a pack. Um, Condor, 1970. Since James Lee does not want to run for a fourth term, you can bet Bob Ferguson wants it. Glenn, have you considered running against Ferguson in the next election? No, I really haven't. Um, um, and not that it wouldn't be fun. I just, I, I, we, I want people who are likely to be able to do better and have them run for office in there. Uh, as I've said earlier in this live stream here, I'm, I'm happy to be the guy that they hire to come in and cut government uh, deep and wide and chop it up and, and shrink it down. That'd be a good job for me, actually. But um, I'm not particularly interested in running, although I plan to talk about Ferguson quite a bit over the next period of time. Um, Jerry Wright is an older person. They just want more property tax from us, support these schools, hard to stomach. It is. If you look at the average school budget in Washington state, uh, it's about 88% made up, roughly about 88% goes to pay salaries. Not a surprise. Um, the real differentiation that you'll be able to get in a school, to, and by the way, about 9% of the money, sometimes 8% comes from the feds. The majority of it comes from the state and your local property taxes are part of that process. The um, the thing to look at, I always think, when you're when you're looking at a school district is how many administrators they have. And their administrator ratio, meaning the people that don't touch kids, the, not the teachers, not the TAs, um, but the senior staff or the back office staff, if they are really heavy in that department, um, that's money that that's where you're going to be cutting. If you care about the schools, you're going to start cutting there. But instead, what you see is you'll see school districts cut their arts program or the music program or um 
something that some group community in the area actually likes to have. Uh, I'll never forget the Kent School District a couple of years ago, and nobody should forget this. Um, they push really hard get this the, to get their local levy passed. And then right after the levy passed, they laid off a whole bunch of teachers, and the parents were wondering, what the heck happened? We just passed this levy. Well, what had happened is uh, uh, three of the school board members colluded with uh, the superintendent to lie about their budget and how bad a shape they were really in. And so they needed the levy, not just to keep school running, but just to survive. And all the programs they claimed that they would pass with it, they essentially got rid of them by dumping those um, those programs because they didn't have the money. It was just terrible. So anyway, um, well, let's see. I already answered that question. Uh, okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to be, I think we're starting to get, how far along are we right now? Yep, we're probably getting the time where uh, I don't want to bore you guys any longer, but um, I'll answer a couple more questions and then we'll probably just wrap it up for this evening. Um, when do we get $30 car tabs uh, when you get some Republicans in office? Uh, where, what are the top three to four problems plaguing Washington right now? Number one, crime. The crime problem, just from a, um, you know, just from a living in, uh, the community, that's the biggest problem. I, I realize it's more concentrated in the, in the urban areas, but it's the biggest problem that we have related to the crime problem. And it's really, it's dovetailed directly into that. It's drug addiction issues that we have. Um, we don't have a homeless problem in Washington state. We do have a drug addiction problem that creates this perceived homeless problem, which actually creates a whole bunch of other problems because the crime is directly tied into that. Um, we may be willing to give, we being the government seems to be willing to give these people free everything, right? Free food, free clothing, free pallets, free propane, free tents, uh, free place to stay, free, free, free. But the drug dealers, uh, they actually need to be paid in cash. And eventually the drug addicts need to get cash. So they're going to commit crimes to get that cash. That's, that's ultimately what happens. So those two issues are kind of dovetailed together and they're the big, big problems. I would say the third and final problem that I would say is one of the bigger ones too, is the collapsing standards in the school districts are going to create all kinds of other problems moving forward. Um, kids that are basically not literate and not, not capable of, of math. Um, that's the definition generally of most Democrat politicians today, but it doesn't mean that we want every kid to come out of the school system just as ignorant as the Democrat politicians who run the state. So um, anyway, I, that's, I would say if you just focus on just those, I, I think that related to that is that uh, a lot of the tax dollars that we have in the state get wasted in this grant grifting operations most of which do things that hurt us, not help us. And so if we get, could cut off that, I think we would we would solve some of our problems there as well. Um, let's see. One, let's see if I'm going to go to my last questions here. Uh, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, this will be my last question because this has come up a lot and uh, is that do you think they will fix the Blake decision? The Blake decision, for those of you who don't know, just has to do with a decision that Supreme Courts and Inf Infinite Wisdom decided to make it harder related to um, uh, ba basically drug possession, to decriminalize drug possession. I'm simplifying it here, but that was essentially what the Blake decision was. And the argument that's been made by both law enforcement and some of these local jurisdictions in Washington state has been that you want the ability to, when you are when you keep arresting somebody for behavior and they, they have possession of drugs on them, hard drugs, fentanyl, whatever, you want the ability to say, listen, we've arrested you three times on this. This is a, this is a felony. We're going to send you to jail or you're going to go into this treatment program and there is no other choice. You're going straight to jail or you're going to go in this treatment program. And um, that was how, for the most part, that was how um, they used most of the drug possession, hard drug possession laws in our state. That's the practical reality of how they use it most of the time. That's been taken away. So what happens is that sent by not criminalizing it, by not sending somebody to jail with it, they have no chance of becoming free from addiction. And anybody that's actually had family members or friends who are addicted to hard drugs like this until they die or until they're homeless on the street, just living in horrible situations, you know, they're not going to go seek out treatment on their own. We need to find some way to get them into a treatment program so they can become sane again and, you know, get back on their feet. And fixing the Blake decision is generally the question that we people have been talking about focused on and what happened is the state legislature promised that they would do it and of course they failed to do it at all while they were there even the democrats have been openly mocking them about it in fact it's the one thing that the governor Inslee claims he may do a special session on just to fix that issue because it's pissed off almost everybody who's had any attachment to trying to help and get people off drugs so i don't know if they're going to really get to that but we'll we'll see how it goes um 
if it isn't fixed that way, I anticipate another initiative on that one as well to kind of get to that same that same point in time. Uh, with that, I just want to thank everybody who's on the show right now. We've had a little over 100 some odd people here, I think. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, jumping on. This is a, even though I've done a couple of these before, this is not a common format for me to use. Um, I would like to do this more. If you guys like uh, this type of format, please leave your comments below. Just give me some feedback. Let me know. Um, I, um, I know I missed some of your questions in here. So uh, I'll try to do this on a more regular basis. One of our goals have been trying to do maybe one of these a month or a couple of these a month, maybe if I'm, if I'm really particularly motivated. You'll also see me in person a lot. If you could travel around the state, I do a lot of public events. I want to remind everybody that if you haven't subscribed to my channel, probably most of you on this comment thread or who are watching this live stream probably have. But if you haven't, please go down below and just hit uh, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's kind of a game that YouTube plays, right? But the more people that subscribe to the channel, um, the better visibility I can get sometimes with these videos. Yes, I'm back and everything up on Rumble, but the it, I'm trying to use YouTube to reach people that I might not otherwise reach any other way. So uh, if you want more people to see videos like this and like my regular videos you see on my channel, uh, please hit like and subscribe and then share the video out to other people. There's a lot of people that won't see this content because it's shadow banned on a regular basis. And um, the only way they really would see it is if it's shared with them by people or friends or acquaintances or co workers or political enemies or whoever. So uh, anyway, uh, I hope you appreciated this. It seemed to have gone fast from my perspective, but I realized that we've been on for uh, an hour and 15 minutes, which is probably longer than most of you want to listen to me. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time and we will do this again. And I'll let you know when we're going to do our next live stream. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you and your kind words and even your negative feedback here. It's all good. So thank you so much.